Welcome back to Tom Talks About Instruments and Things on this channel. <laughs> Since almost my very first video, actually the very first video I ever made for YouTube, can you see it here? Oh, you can't. This bass over here, this guy, it's been in the background of like all my videos, let me get it. And a lot of people comment on this Fender P bass, but it's actually not a P bass. It is an SX VTG, uh, which is not as fancy as an actual P bass would be. I have a bunch of electric guitars, but before I started playing guitar, I actually got a bass first when I was 15, back in 2001, it was just from a pawn shop. It just wasn't great. And I had that for about a year and a half or two years before I traded it to a friend for a guitar. And then I just never had a bass, but I wanted one. I really like the Fender P bass. And I know I'm not amazing at the bass, so back in 2016, I found this from Rondo Music. I forget his name, but the guy who runs the Rondo Music website has built up a reputation over the years of being able to source very inexpensive, like copy guitars that are still high quality, even though they're pretty inexpensive. So this is a P bass copy that cost me $130. <laughs> uh, but it's great, like this color is awesome. It works well, it's set up okay. It has some things I really like and some things I don't, but I was like, you know, I can spend $130 on a guitar or a bass and be happy with it and I can fool around with it and I can record with it and I can learn a little bit. The sound is decent. The neck is actually fantastic. It's a really nice, really comfortable neck on this bass, but it does have some limitations. Specifically, the pickups aren't great. They get kind of muddy pretty quickly. It's a plywood body and you can easily see places where like the pieces of wood are glued together here. While the neck feels really good, like way higher quality than you would expect, the frets are really bad. I actually did file down the frets because they were literally cutting me and like making me bleed. These pieces of metal were sticking out past the edge of the fingerboard and when you run your hand up and down while you're playing, your fingers would get caught. So I filed them down as much as I could, but they're still pretty rough. Like you can still scratch and potentially even cut yourself, especially some of the ones down here. One of the tuners is always really rattly when I play like the A string, it just, the tuner starts rattling. And while none of those are big issues, what I've realized over the past six years is it's just enough to kind of be discouraging when it comes to playing the bass. Like I can play around and have fun with it, but I find myself, I'd rather grab a guitar that is really set up well and sounds great. I'd rather play the drums, which are, you know, set up well and sound great. And so I haven't progressed on the bass as much as I wanted. I decided that the time was here to finally buy a legit Fender P bass. The P bass, this kind of bass, has a long history going all the way back to 1951, or really maybe 1954 for this specific style. And then everything that came after it kind of iterated on this in one way or another. So I wanted this very traditional precision bass, P bass style. So I wanted to invest decent money in a bass that like some of my guitars that I've had for like 20 years at this point, could conceivably last the rest of my life. So it briefly got lost in shipping, but it arrived today and that is this giant box. This is my new bass. I ordered it from Sweetwater and I'm excited because it's the first guitar that I've ordered from Sweetwater. And a cool thing about when you order a guitar from Sweetwater is they don't just get it from the company that makes it and then ship it to you. They do a full on, this sounds like a commercial, 55 point inspection of your guitar. But I've watched so many videos about how this works and it's really impressive. They have an entire like guitar workshop luthier department where the guitar goes down the line and gets inspected from like top to bottom in every way possible. So that way by the time it's listed for sale on their website, it's absolutely perfect. And the photos they post on the website are actually of the actual guitar. The downside is this right here. I don't know if you can see this label, but this basically says that they strongly encourage you to wait 24 hours before opening this box. The reason being is because they keep everything in a climate controlled warehouse, but then it goes through shipping. This came from Indiana to Southern California, very different climates. So by letting it acclimate in the box, it will help everything stay adjusted. The thing is, it got kind of lost in shipping a little bit. So I don't really know how long it's been in like our local climate. It could have been a few hours or it could have been since yesterday, which would be 24 hours. I don't think I have it in me to wait 24 hours. I think this has been in our area for at least 12 hours at this point. And so I think I'm just gonna open it and hope for the best because how can I not? While we wait a little bit, I could tell you about why I got a P bass <laughs> and 
some of, of just why I like the bass in general. If you're not familiar with where a bass fits in a band, in a typical like rock and roll or like punk rock band with guitar, bass, and drums, the bass is really the glue between like the drums and the guitar. The guitar kind of handles these higher end frequencies, the drums are the percussion, and the bass sort of ties it all together, filling in a lot of the lower frequencies, but a bass of course can do higher frequencies as well. Even though I've been playing guitar for 21 years this year, I'm not a great guitar player and I'm a far worse bass player than I am guitar, but it's really, really fun. And one thing I had to learn was that for a long time, I didn't want to get a really good bass until I felt that I deserved it. Like I had reached a certain level of proficiency or something, and that's just kind of never going to happen. But what I also learned, I found an interview with Matt Freeman, who's one of my two favorite basses. Matt Freeman is the bass player from Rancid and Operation Ivy, and he's amazing. And there's a quick interview on the Fender YouTube channel with him where he, even though I think he is a very skilled technical bass player and he can do amazing stuff that I could never do, said in his interview was like it's all about just having fun and expressing yourself your own way he was like I don't care if you play with one string just enjoy it and just have fun and again I don't know why I always need someone to give me permission to do these things but hearing that made me feel a lot better like oh I don't need to memorize every scale and every note on the fretboard I can just have fun with it and that's that's more than valid enough and my other favorite bass player is Mark Hoppus from Blink-182 and it was actually the the what's my H again bass line the That one, that when that song came out when I was in middle school, that's what made me first notice the bass because I thought that sounded really, really cool. And a lot of Mark's bass lines, he does have some complex, crazy, creative, fun stuff, but a lot of them are really simple. They follow the guitar or they're just simple melodies or it's just like. And you know what, if I want to get a nice instrument that I can sit in my room and just play Blink-182 songs on, and that's what makes me happy and is fun, there's no reason not to do that. So I think we're just gonna go for it and see what we get in this box, which is also what you get when you order a guitar from Sweetwater. There's a box inside this box. <sighs> this stuff over here though is actually pretty interesting. So we live in the Coachella Valley, California. Uh, this came from Fender, California, because this is an American-made Strat, which in Fender's lineup, the ones that are made in America are like the higher-end ones. So this was built in Corona, then went to San Bernardino, then went to Fort Wayne, Indiana <laughs> for Sweetwater, and then came back here, which is, we live about an hour away from San Bernardino, so just, <laughs> just kind of back where it started from. This sticker right here is the last one that somebody puts on this piece of tape that says Sweetwater Guitar Gallery. And that's after the whole thing has been inspected and checked and maybe fine tuned and adjusted a little bit and taken pictures of and polished and cleaned and all that stuff. When they put it back in the box to send to you, that's the last thing they do before they send it out. So it's like, normally I would hate the idea of getting something new that other people have touched, but in this case, I like it better. This is very different than buying a base from a pawn shop. All right, so what do we got? I got some foam. Ah, one thing I've never had with any guitar ever, actually, is just in case this bass comes with a case to help it stay in place. Oh, I don't know if I should open it up first or show it to the camera first. I'll show it to the camera first. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm not gonna look at it, but you're gonna see it. Did you see it? How is it? Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Oh, boy, this is really nice. Got the Sweetwater inspection card. And here's everything they check for, all the different things. It's so cool, like if you go to YouTube and you type in like Sweetwater 55 point thing, even on their website they have a video. It's crazy, like how much detail and attention is given to each thing. Oh my God, look at that. I'm actually kind of surprised at how light it is. I think it's 
significantly lighter than that one, but that's not a bad thing because that's that one's super heavy. So the headstock, you can see it's a precision base made in Corona, California. And on the back of the headstock, it actually does have a 75th anniversary logo. Now on the color is Miami Blue, which is uh, notably one of the more difficult colors to photograph because it looks different every time, but in person, it's like amazing. The neck is so nice. It has like a, it's not as glossy as my other one. It's a satin finish, but it's like, it's so smooth. It has something I really wanted, this specific model, which is a rounded fretboard. So not only are the frets even, but they actually kind of like, it sort of rounds in, which means it's not, it's never going to cut your hand or anything like that. Oh, it feels so nice. It's way lighter than my other one is, but body styles are basically the same, basically the same. So you can see like this one is just based on, <laughs> based on this one right here. But a couple difference, this just has, in addition to just being pieces of plywood glued together, the back is just kind of a normal joint there. Aside from being higher quality wood, where if it didn't have a beautiful finish on it, it would just be, it would just be a nice piece of wood that like you could look at the grain on and it would be very pretty. But the back has this special, what is it, a five piece, five screw neck plate here. And it has like a curve right here which doesn't seem like much, but on a base especially makes it really easy to put your hand right here. So if you are playing higher notes, it's like you can reach from the first fret all the way to like the 20th fret with no problem. It's just super easy. I love the color of the neck. It's kind of dark. The front of the neck seems kind of glossy and the back, oh, it's just, it's really nice. Oh, and the bridge itself, in addition to just being super nice, actually goes through the body. So you put the strings through here, or you could put them through the top if you want, but that's supposed to help the notes have a lot more sustain and ring out a lot more. So I'm gonna plug it in. It doesn't make any noise if I'm not touching it. Now what I didn't really look at was what else comes in the case when you get it. So you get your super nice case, which is molded specifically for this model. And this is so soft. It feels like it looks. <laughs> but there's a little compartment right here that you can open up. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is like premium. <laughs> we got all the stuff. These were on the guitar when it came from the factory before Sweetwater did their inspection. So you got some Fender tags. We got the Fender people. Look at all of these different people who had to help assemble and make and inspect and then Sweetwater inspect the guitar. There's a whole, like, so many people had their hands on this guitar to make it nice. I don't know if you can see, but the inside of the bag even has the Fender logo on it. So you get some Allen keys and a wrench for the truss rod, which I'm not going to mess with any of that right now. Get a sticker. Warranty registration manual thingy. Certificate of authenticity. Let's make it related to previous videos. This $90 guitar when I bought it, now it's worth a little more because it's older and it's also got higher end gear in it, but the least expensive guitar you could get that's sold sort of under the Fender umbrella. What basically the next level above this would be in their lineup would be like a custom shop guitar where you just have a custom guitar maker from Fender make the exact guitar that you want. Now I should probably take it back out of here and, and play it. I do feel a little obligated to point out that that recording was from five years ago. I just randomly did a recording of a rock show from Blink-182, and so I just took out the bass track and recorded one just now. But I just did one take just to try my best. Don't judge too harshly. <laughs> 